First off, I'd like to say very special thanks to Dave Cross for putting on the Photoshop Virtual Summit. And I'm excited to get a chance to share with you some time-saving tips inside of Photoshop. My name is Rich Harrington. I'm the publisher of PhotoFocus. And what we're going to cover here are things that are just going to help you get things done more quickly. Let's take a quick look at scripts. Scripts are a tad complex, but they're very useful because they do some very fast things that would be difficult to do manually. Now, with scripts, you'll find these under the file menu as well. And normally, scripting requires some programming skills. But I'm going to show you how to use a few built-in ones that are truly useful. Again, you'll just choose File, Scripts, and this will let you access things. Now, one of my favorites here is the Image Processor script. This is a very easy way to batch process photos. What you can do is choose the images that you want and select a folder, including the ability to include subfolders if needed. Tell it where it's going to save. In this case, I'll choose a new folder here. And I just made a folder called to post on my desktop. Perfect. Choose a file format. You can actually make multiple file types, including JPEG, PST, and TIFFs. This is useful if you want a TIFF for archive and printing and a JPEG for posting to the web. Choose if you want to run an action or not and assign a copyright. When you choose run, it's going to process all of those images and resize them, do the color space conversion, attach the copyright info, and even run an action. In fact, I prefer this way more than the batch command because it avoids some of the issues of what file type is saved or where you put it. It just makes it a lot easier to quickly process. Plus, the original images remain untouched. Now, let's try another technique. I'm going to open up three raw files that I captured. This was taking an object series here, and you notice how I shifted the focus point to keep everything in focus on the objects. Feel free to do any development settings that you need, apply any sharpening or adjustments. Just make sure that you apply consistent results to all of the images here so that they stay really the same all the way through. And you can get there and keep those in sync before you actually do the processing. So select all and sync settings. There we go. Now I can go ahead and open those up, but open as a copy instead of smart objects. Now we can load those into a stack. File scripts, load files into stack. I'll add my open files and click OK. You see they're loaded into a single document with the different pieces there ready to go. Now I'll select all three layers and tell it that I want to blend those. From the Edit menu, I could choose Auto Blend Layers, tell it it's a stack, and that I want seamless tone and colors, and click OK. It analyzes the image, finds the in-focus parts of each, and merges it together, which is pretty cool. Notice how it took the top focus, the mid focus, and then the foreground focus to keep everything sharp from front to back, which is really amazing because this is great for things like product photography. Obviously, you might need to crop or tweak just a little bit here to refine the image. But as you see, this is really cool because it lets you create a depth of field that would be difficult, if not impossible, when shooting close up like this. Now what I'm able to do is to keep everything in focus from the front to the back of my frame and have greater control and flexibility over the image itself. Now, this sort of loading things into stacks can also be used for other creative outputs. I like to shoot time lapses and also nighttime photography. And if you shoot the stars long enough, they actually move. And so you can combine these into layers. Just do the same thing, file scripts, load files into stack, and choose a series of images. You're going to want to shoot these off of a tripod here and just load them up. I suggest you create a smart object when you're done and click OK. Now what it does here is actually loads all of this up and then takes it and combines all of the layers into one smart object, which we can then utilize to compare the layers to each other. Now you see we have a new smart object and just go into the layer menu and choose the smart object itself. And you can go to stack mode and combine these. 
There's different methods, but what it does is averages the data. So maximum here is going to add up the bright values and create effectively a star trail. Pretty cool. Now we can refine this with a curves adjustment layer. And I'm just going to tweak the black point, use the on image tool there, pull that shadowy area down, which I like, and just bring up the highlights here a touch. Very cool. And let's put in an HSL layer and just subtly bring out the blues a little bit. I'll choose colorize, set the blue point there, and adjust. And you can blend that for softer results if you want. Notice how we can mix that in there just to get a subtle hint of the color. And I really like where that came from. Now, scripts have an added benefit that we can also use them to clean up a file. Let's say you've got a design that you've built. And in that design, you have some things you might not need. For example, maybe an empty layer, a work layer here, or a markup layer. Or you have some effects that you want to process. Well, from the scripts menu, we can very quickly clean things up. For example, I could tell it that I want to delete all empty layers. It cleans up my document. Or that I would like to clean this up and flatten all layer effects. Well, there they are, and you see they're permanently applied. Or if we undo that and we don't get rid of the layer effects, maybe I just want to permanently apply the masks like so. So you see, you get that great flexibility for cleaning things up. And this is good. It is destructive. So you might want to work on a copy. But if you want to ensure that things are really good to go and easy to hand off, maybe for web animation, this is a simple way to process that. If you'd like to continue the learning, I offer a couple different ways to do that. Remember, PhotoFocus has daily content that's going to give you news, information, tutorials, and tips, not just from me, but more than 20 other great photographers. And you can check out ThinkTap Learn. This is another online platform where I offer courses that will help you out.